to our next game, just making sure you're paying attention. So our next game is called World's Greatest Experts. Oh yeah. Oh, baby. We are the world's greatest expert on any subject that you pick for us, which means you have to yell out a topic, and Jessica and I are going to elaborate all about it. We will be taking questions about this topic. We, will, we are the experts on whatever topic you give us, and we are taking suggestions now. Okay, one at a time. Hold the fuck up. Mormons. Mormons, like the creation of... What about the Mormons? Everything about Mormons. Okay, everything about Mormons. No. Let's start at the beginning, okay? At the very the beginning. The very beginning. Um, it was a dark time because the land was entirely flat, except for two squirrels, okay? And these two squirrels evolved over time into the hairiest of Mormons, which then built this whole large empire. That's how it began. It started with just these two evolutionized squirrels. Yeah, Mary and Magdalene. Yes, absolutely. And they were... <laughs> And uh, Mary, it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> red-tailed squirrel. A red-tailed squirrel? Mary, yeah, Mary was the red-tailed squirrel, and Magdalene was the, the rabid one. <laughs> and so they built this Mormon empire, absolutely, and uh, because of it, these rules and these laws and these people came to follow the practices of Mary and Magdalene, the red-tailed squirrels. Okay, and it just kind of boiled down because people started believing that if you followed these squirrels that you could live a life of happiness and uh, the only way you could have intercourse is by putting some dental dams down. The only way that you could have anything in between that you could have any kind of sexual experience with. That was part of their message, part of their word, and uh, yeah. I just... Well, it was, it was more, not so much a message, it was a warning. Uh, at one point, Magdalene was... Uh serving fellatio to uh, Mary, and because they were rabid, the teeth got in the way, it was a whole thing, which is why we need dental dams and why it's recommended. So uh, if you're not practicing fellatio with dental dams, you are sinning against Mary and Magdalene and uh, the holy great bushy spirit, <laughs> and you will be sent immediately to squirrel hell. What about Joseph Smith? That's great. Oh, he, uh, he was the nut that the squirrels carried with him. Okay, they named the nut Joseph Smith because they carried this nut. It survived for many, many years without decomposing, and they, they could bury it, and it would grow more nuts, so the nut of Joseph Smith. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will be taking questions about Mormonism at this time. Uh, any questions, please raise your hand and then scream your question. Are there any offshoots of the religion? Any offshoots of the religion? Yes, yes, there are. There are several offshoots. Uh, there is the Arctic Mormons, uh, which are all uh, the Arctic squirrels, which originated in the Arctic place. Um, similar to the size of like a modern uh, cat, a household cat, okay? That's the size because they have to stay warm. So it's a little bit different in terms of how they, they showcase themselves. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Checks out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yes, over here. Oh, how do you become a Mormon? Now, the indoctrination process is actually nothing we can talk about here. We know everything about it, of course. We're the world's greatest experts on Mormonism, but we're not actually allowed to speak of it here. However, we can insinuate some things, uh, like tying a ribbon around your left toe and dragging it in the snow, uh, and tying a acorn and sticking it in your butthole and attaching that to the string wrapped around your left toe, uh, and then jumping. Nothing, of course, we can say out loud, but uh, you, you get the gist, of course. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, did Jesus live in the United States? Oh, Jesus we're, are we, a myth uh, <laughs> perpetuated Are we still the Mormons Mormon. with, the, with the squirrels? Yeah, this is still, a, or is this a whole, okay, I'm just making sure, okay. Yeah, no, that, that was a myth, and also not related to the topic at hand. Thank you for asking, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what? God is a squirrel. Were you not listening? <laughs> and squirrel has no gender in this case. Just, just Bush and the, the nut of Joseph also was genderless as well. <laughs> the only identification our God takes is Bush and nut. Where can you sign up? We actually have pamphlets out in this large van on the ice rink over here on the side of the building. If you want to come and get some more information on joining the Bushy Squirrelism Mormon Church here. And uh, we have that right around the corner after the show. Yeah, and uh, we do take the signatures in blood, uh, which you can sign when the man in the van beats you on the back of the head with a club and drags you into the van. 
I'm into that. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good, because you have no other option. Yes, question. Oh, see, the Book of Mormon actually was just a burrow, okay? It was just a large burrow of different collected objects that all of the squirrels, as they continued to mate, brought back together to one larger concept. So really, when you visit this burrow, it's like the book you may speak of because it has stories and history all within the burrow of all the objects and things, these squirrels, this tribe, this cult of wonderful people that came to put it in the one large burrow. The book of burrow, if you will. <laughs> it was a mistranslation from squirrelies into English. Uh, book was mistranslated because they had chapters of squirrels, which uh, the Arctic squirrels, the North Atlantic squirrels, the South Atlantic squirrels, the Mid-Atlantic squirrels, all uh, would burrow and meet each other at the center of the earth. And uh, each chapter, as they were known, became one individual book with multiple stories, which was mistranslated into Book of Mormon. What was that? No, no, those were solid gold, like, wrappers in the burrow, okay? <laughs> those were just collected wrappers that were part of the history. Did you not understand Bur Book of Burrow, okay? Think of it that way. Just a big burrow of objects collected. <laughs> Oh man, incest was completely okay in this, okay? <laughs> and continues to be okay. The, 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 the strong message of love is love, regardless of if it's your mother, grandma, sister, is important in this squirrel family, okay? That's how the elongation of their, of their success, of, their, of this religion has succeeded so long. Yes, uh, there's a saying in Mormonism, uh, bush or tail, nut or whatever. <laughs> what? I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that to heart. Really. Yeah, We're, it changed my life when I heard it. Multiple. multiple. It's okay. Multiple's fine. I'm just in, in saying it's usually within the the same people, the same group. So I just want to preface that. But pretty much, it's a free for all. Okay. At all times, regardless of where you're, you know, how you go to the borough and you just. <laughs> Do what you gotta do. The winters are long, and the, the, the fucking's harder. <laughs> Book of Mormon, chapter three. <laughs> we'll be taking one more question on Mormonism at this time. Uh, one final question. Yes, yes, over here. Like the, the sex position or the, the job within the Mormon group? Okay, the, okay. The recruiters, yes. Yeah, they are uh, actually six squirrels in a man costume. That's what I thought! Uh, they knock on your door. They're not there to recruit you. You've already been recruited. Uh, you're living a fever dream in the burrow. But they're there to steal the nuts that you have in your fever dream. They walk through dreams, of course. We all know that. Yes. Thank you. Great question. Yeah, thank you so Remember, much. Remember, bush or tail, squirrel or nut. <laughs> or whatever. Thank you so much. Uh, that was our world's greatest experts uh, on Mormonism. We will do one more topic of which we are the world's greatest experts. Uh, so, whatever topic, yes, we have a topic here. Live sewage. Oh. oh. Live sewage. <laughs> As opposed to dead. Well, the difference between live sewage and dead sewage is, is really not that fine a line. Uh, most matter is decaying as soon as it leaves the womb. So when it ends in the sewer, it's pretty much on its way out to the ocean and the, uh, the pasture, as it were. Uh, things that are in the sewer are dying and also alive uh, due to biochemical processes. Hello? You good? All right, work. Biochemical processes, uh, the feces and the, the, uh, the, the semen and the little squiggly bits that live in the sewer all kind of intermix and became one giant creature. And the squiggly bits are the most important part. You might think that was genre just because we needed to cover up another word or term. The squiggly bits are very important in the bio biology and the DNA components of live sewage, okay? It's what helps it move, stay growing alive, and sometimes it even gets to the point of being a little over the top, you know? It may be on the way out on one end, but it's really just going to come and get you in the middle of the night on the other, so. <laughs> yeah, squiggly bits, a term, a term of Darwin, 
originated on the Galapagos? Huh? Great question. <laughs> I'm gonna change my battery in this microphone. You just keep uh, talking about live sewage. Do we have moment. any questions about live sewage? <laughs> yes, over here, I heard a noise. <laughs> what was your question, in dolphin? <laughs> Do we have any questions about live sewage? Okay, yes. Are there, are there any animals that feed off of live sewage? Are there any animals that feed off of live sewage? Sorry. Absolutely, um, there are... <laughs> There are pigs, there are some of your local farm animals are going to be the ones to feed off of live sewage. Um, you might find some trolls within a social environment as well that like to feed off of live sewage, just because that is how they can get day to day with a little spoonful of it every single day. And so, even if they don't need it, uh, even if someone may not need live sewage, uh, they crave it so much that they just bottle it and store it until it's ready to come out even more. So, uh, I would say yes, those are some of the, the people that would feed off of that. Great question. Great question. Yes? How can you tell the difference between live sewage and, like, an ex-partner? Oh, oh, shit. Not the difference. Okay, we're going a little bit in a different route here. An ex-partner in live uh, sewage. Sometimes they're one and the same. Absolutely. Okay, some of, some of your exes are more than likely dead sewage in your soul, hopefully. And, uh, the live sewage pieces, I think that you respect them enough that they stay here with you, but you remember how shitty they were, so you don't let them get too close. Okay, I think that's, that's the sewage part. Now, if you wanted to go in the direction of the original question, you could sewage, live sewage, in water balloons to throw at your exes, okay, if you needed to. And when it hits them in the face, the squiggly bits dig it deep, and their pores will never be the same. So it's it's a two for one special there. <laughs> Only specific circumstances, of course. Of course, of course, yes. Uh, do we have more questions about live sewage? Uh, live sewage walks among us. You can li find live sewage anywhere. They could be in this room. You don't know. Uh, it shapeshifts into whatever shape suits its needs best. So, uh, much like the thing, the John Carpenter movie, uh, live sewage will turn into an animate object and can interact and walk among us. That mine could be live sewage. Yes, yes, absolutely. It could be. Great question. Thank you. Yes, we have another one right over here. What would you say is the most rewarding thing about live sewage? Oh my gosh, when you flush live sewage and you just learn how to cope without it and you don't, you can leave it in its own natural habitat to grow and fester in its own ways. And you can look at it through a fishbowl and just be like, oh, look at that live sewage. Have a good one, you know? That, that's, that's what I would have to say. That's, that's, yeah. That was poignant. I love that. Thank you. Poetry. <laughs> Welcome to Stupid. <laughs> Thank you so much. That has been the world's greatest experts. That's us, baby.